Hello, everybody. Good evening and welcome to the fourth webinar um, organized by TickMill in collaboration with Volumetrica Trading, talking about volume. Uh, tonight, we will be talking about the volume profile. So this will be the uh, first of the two webinars uh, focusing on the volume profile as a tool and how to use it in our trading. Uh, before, before we get started, I just want to quickly uh talk about the special offer uh reserves for all you uh subscribing to these uh, series of webinars uh which is basically uh first of all all you, what you can do you can uh go into the volumetrica trading website uh you can uh email volumetrica trading asking for a free demo of the platform uh i'll just uh, write down the email address for you in the chat and for all of you already uh, who are uh, tick mail uh, customers uh, there is a special offer uh, special for these webinars which basically uh, allows you to have a, a, a special price to get the platform and for the first month this price will be refunded directly in your trading account and all of the terms and conditions of course apply in the uh here at the page dedicated to the offer so uh before we get started i'll just um write down in the chat the email address at which you can request a free uh, demo info at volumetrica trading.com here it is and uh, for uh, those who are already customers this is the link you can visit to here it is to use the promotion reserved for thick milk customers for trying out the uh, volumetrica trading platform and this is uh this applies of course to the uh Volsys platform okay so uh, those are the uh terms and conditions of this offer uh let's get started talking about the volume profile and so we get started with the main topic of this webinar so first of all uh what is volume profile uh, this is a very uh, important tool, uh, and that's why I personally wanted to dedicate two different webinars talking about it. Why? First of all, first of all, uh, what is volume profile? Um, it is an advanced charting study displaying trading activity over a specific time period at specified price levels. So unlike the uh, plain, the ordinary volume indicator, the one you can see here at the bottom of my chart, uh, which displays volume traded over uh, time. Volume profile shows trading activity focusing on the price where uh, such volume was trading so was trading so basically uh what its main features uh this study uh plots a histogram on the chart meant to reveal dominant or significant price levels based on volume so on the price traded so we unlike the main plane the ordinary indicator volume they, they are sorry <laughs> Uh, unlike the ordinary uh, volume indicators uh, displaying price, displaying volume on the time axis, volume profile shows traded volume on the price axis here. So what we get is basically a profile uh, shaped curve uh, showing us which prices were have caught more interest by uh, buyers or sellers and which prices 
have got less interest. So this is basically its main features. In fact, we can immediately distinguish between uh, long histograms and short histograms. That gives us immediately an idea of which volume, which prices uh, were more traded and which prices were less traded. Okay. Uh, for this reason, we already, we immediately have an idea, a clue of where most volume has uh, accumulated. Okay. Uh, essentially, uh, volume profile takes the total volume traded at a, at a specific price level during a specified time period. And of course, that uh, tells us that we can use different, uh, different types of volume profile. Uh, for example, we can decide whether we want to see a daily volume profile like the one I am highlighting right now. This is basically a volume profile. We are on a S&P 500 chart. And this one you can see here is a volume profile showing the session. Okay, so basically it refers to the entire day of trading. Okay, but as you can see here on the right side of it, I have two uh, additional volume profile. The one exactly at the left, at the right, sorry. This is a weekly volume profile. So basically starts on Monday and ends on Friday. And for this reason, it is exactly the same as the daily profile since today is still uh, Monday. Okay. And the one you can see on the right, this is a 40, 400 days composite profile. Why is it called composite? Because it includes more sessions together. Okay. Uh, so that basically tells us that we can, uh, time is still uh, an important variable of volume profile because basically what we can do is uh, plot a volume profile over a session. So basically a day of trading or a week or two weeks uh, or a month or years. Okay. And of course, uh, the representation we will get from the tool will be, of course, referred to the uh, period we have chosen. Okay. Uh, what are the most important uh, elements of a volume profile? The most, imp the, the most important part of a volume profile, as many of you maybe already know, is the POC which stands for point of control. Point of control is, as highlighted here by Volsi's platform, is this uh, pink line you can see here exactly at the middle of my drawing. POC, yeah, now it looks a little bit better, <laughs> sorry. Uh, basically, point of control, shows the uh, trading level which uh, where the most volume of the day is traded. So uh, it is always a high volume node, of course, and it shows us where the most uh, volume of the day was traded. Of course, if we are analyzing a daily profile, if we are analyzing a weekly profile, it shows us the uh, level, the price level where the most week, the most volume of the week was traded. And of course, this is still uh, in reference to the period we are uh, analyzed and profiled about. Um, what is POC? POC, of course, being the uh, most traded volume, uh, gives us the clue of an accepted price not really a clue actually it gives us the evidence of uh, which price throughout the day was most accepted 
Okay, what do I mean by accepted? I mean that both sellers and buyers were agreeing with that price, with that price be, being convenient. Okay, so basically, what do we get? Uh, what kind of trading activity we tend to have uh, when price is trading uh, close to the POC? Uh, we have a price, a, a, a balanced volume. Okay, many people are, many traders are selling and many traders are buying. That gives us a, a balanced price area. Okay, uh, and this is the main reason because if you want to uh, apply uh, straight away this concept to our trading or oh, different trading strategies, POC price level, price area are the most dangerous to start to trade on. Why? Exactly for this reason. It shows us price where uh, both sellers and buyers are uh, somehow uh, sure that by buying or selling, they're making a good deal. Okay, so we, we will tend to have a two-way trade. Of course, it also shows us a balanced price area. So ideally, POC level, POC price area, it is best intended out as a target level to our trade, not really a good place to, to start our trade from. Why? Because being a balanced level, a price, a, a, an area where um, sellers and buyers are balancing each other, of course, uh, after an excess, which we will talk about uh, immediately in a while, price always tends to go back to its price, uh, to, to its balance price. Okay. Uh, this is because of the auction market theory. Let's, in, let's assume just for a second we have price has traded in this area for a while, okay? And this is POC, showing that this price has widely been accepted by the market, okay? And by its, player, by its players, of course. Uh, once we have the evidence of a uh, balanced price being widely accepted by uh, market players, of course, uh, Immediately, market players will have the perception, will tend to have the perception of prices above POC to be considered as perceived as premium prices. Okay, so basically expensive prices. And prices below the POC as discount prices. So basically very cheap, quite cheap. Over these levels, uh, we can, um, we tend to have what is called responsive action. So basically what happens where, when prices get into the discount area, so where prices are considered to be discount prices, of course, buyers will be happy to buy sellers will be not that happy to sell at a low price okay so we will tend to have a, a, an action which will tend to be more imbalanced on the sell on the buyer side than in the on the seller side but of course market is uh, for for a, for each buyer there has to be a seller and vice versa okay so 
many buyers will be willing to, to buy in the discounted area, not so many sellers will be uh, happy to sell. Therefore, not every single buyer will uh, be able to buy at that price, okay? Because that will depend how many sellers they will find, they will find, okay? For this reason, this is something, this is a concept, a principle that will uh, slightly introduce the concept of liquidity, which we will we'll talk uh, talking about over the next webinars, but still, uh, just to keep things simple. Uh, in discounted areas of price, we will tend to have what is called responsive buyers, responsive buyers action. So basically, buyers will be more motivated to get into action and buy because price has reached a, a cheap price. Okay, if some of the buyers were uh, already interested to buy, maybe here, after price gets back into a price which is even more uh, give, gives more benefits to buy because of course price is lower, it's cheaper. Many buyers will, will get into action and buy. Okay, this, this of course will uh, imbalance the market and will tend to bring back the market into the previous balance area. Okay, so let's say into towards the POC. Okay, and this of course will happen as well in the premium area where many sellers will be would be happy to sell, but of course those are expensive prices. So not so many buyers will be would be happy to buy at such high prices. Okay, that of course uh, is a very good uh, that, that that would represent very well, even if in a very simplified way, the auction market theory. Okay, any market for uh, for each good for each uh, security works in this very same way we always every every time we buy something or we sell something we always have a price we get as a reference price which is exactly the poc okay and of course what is below this price we will try we will we will tend to perceive this price as cheap and what is above we will try and we will uh, perceive this price as expensive. Okay. Of course, POC, as I was telling you at the beginning of the webinar, uh, gives us the evidence of an accepted price. Why? Because so much volume has traded on it. Okay. It is the, the most traded volume of the day or of the week or over a period of, of, five, of 500 days. It depends by what kind of volume profile we're looking at. Uh, but of course, high volume, every time we see an Instagram uh, showing us high volume area on the profile, the volume profile show, shows us acceptance of volume, okay? Acceptance of price. And it tends to, uh, behave like a POC, exactly like a POC. So that means price will tend to be attracted by that level, by that price level. Why? Because in that area, price will uh, find, will try and find its point of balance, okay? An accepted price where both buyers and sellers are happy to transact and uh, that helps me to ex to introduce you uh, some different elements some two two more elements uh, 
making the volume profile, which are high volume areas and low volume areas. Okay, uh, high volume areas basically are given by the peaks of volume you can see. So basically, uh, every time you see a long histogram here of volume, you can consider that as a high volume area or otherwise also known as high volume node. Uh, the only difference between uh, an high volume area and an high volume node, it just uh, depends by how many ticks of price you're talking about. If you're talking about a single tick of price, you can talk about it as a high volume node. Otherwise, if you're talking about a wider area, of course, you can uh, refer to those area as an high volume area. Okay, those areas uh, basically are the peaks of profile, and in some circumstances, uh, they act exactly as a POC. They would uh, attract price, but also act as a volume support and resistance area. Why? Because of course, uh, there is also uh, a, statistic, a statistic saying that for 80% of time, price moves between high volume area and high volume area. Okay, exactly as you can see some example here, price today on the ES has traded over here for a period of time, for a certain period of time and has created this high volume area, then dropped here and broke this temporary support and went here creating another high volume area okay at the moment what is price doing it is ranging between two different high volume nodes this one here and this one here okay uh, so basically uh, high volume area acting exactly as the poc would be ideally uh, perfect levels as uh, targets for our trades. Okay, why? First of all, because they tend to attract, attract price. And second, because since they show lots of accumulated volume over there, it shows us where a volume support and resistance can be. So, of course, if an high volume area uh, shows uh, that price is struggling to get over it, that means that maybe our trade needs to be protected, or at least uh, we need to lock some profit in because price might have reached a, a support or resistance level. Let's talk now, now about low volume areas or of course low volume nodes exactly uh, refer exactly as i was telling you about high volume areas or high volume nodes we can talk about low volume areas if you're talking about a wide area or otherwise low volume node if you're talking about the single price level okay low volume areas are basically valleys the valley. So every time we can see a drop in volume within the shape of the volume profile, that means those are level price level which weren't uh, that much accepted. Okay, so price hasn't caught so much interest on that level. M many uh, players didn't want to trade at those price. Uh, what happens when price uh, reaches low volume areas? Basically, we can have two, uh, two behaviors. First of all, we can expect 
price to reject, to quickly reject those areas, or otherwise to click to quickly accelerate and going through the low volume areas. Now, why do those two different patterns happen? Basically, we, we, we just need to think about the concept of acceptance I was talking about earlier. If a price, if, if, if some prices weren't accepted, that means that not so many players wanted to trade those levels. So basically, if I want to buy an I, uh, this level, I need sellers selling me what I am intended to buy. Okay. Low volume shows that maybe we have reached an area where there is no liquidity. Okay. So price is not actually facilitating trades. Therefore, price tend to escape sorry, from these areas and tries to go back into an area where, unlike low volume areas, there was acceptance. Okay. And this, that would uh, actually make our uh, basic strategy to <laughs> consider uh, price uh, to get back into the balance to the balanced area even more strong. Okay. Some other times, what would happen? Price would quickly go through the low volume area. Why? For the very same reason, because if a few people want to decide to buy here, but there is nobody selling, and but the strength of buyer will overcome a few uh, the activity of, of just a few sellers. Of course, price will just start to accelerate, but still not being for too much time inside the area where uh, price wasn't accepted, basically. So now you might ask to yourself, uh, if price can reject sometimes, and sometimes it can just accelerate and go through it, what I must what I'm supposed to do when price gets to in that area, okay? Uh, the magic word is quickly. Whether it rejects or it accelerates and goes through it, whatever it does, it needs to be done quickly, okay? This is the main uh, clue given by the low volume areas. Whatever it happens here, it has to be uh it has to happen quickly that gives us a very good uh even if we haven't talked so much already about the application of this principle that gives us a very uh helpful uh clue on how we can use this principle in our trades let's assume i've gone long here okay and price is going at my favor but at a certain stage i realize i have a low volume area right in front of me okay i know that price can reject or it can just take off and go through the high the low volume area in both cases what uh common sense would suggest me, I need to protect and lock in some of the profit because whatever it happens here, it has to be happening quickly, okay? In fact, as you can see, price every time has tried to, uh, to trade over these low volume areas here, it has rejected and it has come back into its balance area, okay? Making 
of course this area look more always more uh similar like a bell-shaped curve okay showing us actually what a this what is called a distribution distribution is the key word uh in analyzing and uh working trading with the, using the volume profile why because distribution is a, a synonym of acceptance of fair value of um, price market facilitate facilitating trades and it also shows of course the uh, formation of a balanced area which is slowly facilitating trade. So basically, any single, every single uh, curve we can see in the volume profile, it shows the developing action of what an auction auction is. Okay, so basically, here sellers and buyers are trying to find an agreement. Okay, and the final result of this agreement will uh, will define what the next action in terms of price will be. We will talk about this uh, process on uh, next webinar. Uh, but what is very important to focus on right now is what <laughs> why is this auction is in progress we will see we will tend to see price staying within this zone showing a distribution especially why because as you can see a normal uh, bell shaped curve would have this kind of shape right actually it quite it quite reminds us this kind of shape but as you can see there is some volume here missing in order for us to have a perfect bell-shaped curve that means the auction the balancing process the uh, the, the distribution process is still going on okay and of course as long as this process is still uh, on and we can detect this process is still uh, in place, of course, a very good uh, idea of util using the volume profile for our trades is detecting what the south of this auction is and what the north of this auction is, because that will tell us a uh, very good uh, po potential entry points for our trades accompanying the distribution process okay uh, next time of course we will see how to uh, use this concept in our trading uh, actually <laughs> right before we uh, started the webinar I was uh, observing how this low was rejected as we can see the extreme areas of the volume profile uh, shows us not that much volume therefore they can consider uh, as low volume areas we had the rejection here and price has gotten back into what is first high volume node was and actually right now as you can see it is treating this high volume area uh, at the south of this uh, distribution zone as a support. So uh, at the moment, if we we can tell that price is trying to reject what uh, cheaper price are, and is still distributing between those two high volume nodes, the one at the north and the one on the south of the profile.
Okay. Uh, I can see there is a question. Let me just uh, read it. Which volume profile would you use on the 16 minutes? 16 minutes intraday chart daily volume yes definitely um if you are using a 16 minutes uh intraday chart i would tell that maybe your uh your trading uh on a yeah you are trading intraday intraday swings so yeah definitely i would um uh, i would use a daily profile so basically you can uh spot where you have those distribution area that gives that would that would definitely give you a very good uh indication of what uh areas are more important uh for the day for the session uh okay then uh hanna is asking hi just wondering if you showed footprints or it's in the next webinar yeah definitely i will i would sh i will show uh footprint charts and how to use them uh it will be at our last webinar <laughs> because of course uh this is the most advanced tool uh we are we will be talking about and of course it is the perfect tool uh we can use to execute actually what we are uh, what we get from the volume profile analysis what do i mean with that uh, now as i was telling you i've already had the, the clue of price rejecting the south of the profile okay but of course before i execute so I, I can think about a long trade because i already had an evidence of price not wanting to go lower at lower prices and i still have the evidence of price uh likely to distribute in between those two high volume areas but of course uh i need the confirmation uh in in terms of uh not only volume but also in terms of order flow that means i really i, I want to uh want to have the validation of this scenario okay so ideally order flow footprint charts it is the ideal tool to be combined with the volume profile analysis which is actually the same uh kind of trading that i do uh personally i use order flow charts to uh, execute trades, but about how do I use it? I use it as a magnifying glass, okay, uh, where prices gets into important levels. But import, how do I get important levels? Important levels for me are the ones given by the analysis of the volume profile telling me the structure okay i would never uh even if i have a wonderful <laughs> uh, long signal i would never go long if i have the poc right in front of me okay for the reason i was telling about earlier uh, on the opposite i would definitely take a long signal uh gotten from the uh footprint chart if i am at the south side of a balancing volume profile area okay of a balancing distribution area uh basically that helps us a lot on choosing whether a trade location is a good one for a trade or not okay so uh as long as we go as long as we go on with our next appointments uh we will uh see and uh how all of these uh bits can be put all together <laughs> okay uh so now uh please uh if you have some other question uh don't hesitate to uh write them down uh let me uh, remind you once again the offer 
uh, for the Volsys platform uh, in collaboration with Technil. Uh, you can ask for a free demo uh, emailing info at uh, volumetricartrading.com. You can find the, uh, the link here in the chat. I'm going to write it down once again. Here it is. And of course, if you're already a Tickmill customer, you can go at that link, this link. And if you follow the instruction here at this page, you can uh, get a refund on this uh, monthly purchase fee, which is anyway already discounted for Tickmill customers. Okay, uh, this is a uh, no for going on for the entire uh, time of the uh, web. Our webinars will be on, so basically, uh, still six weeks. Okay. Uh, so important, uh, important reminder. Next webinar will be uh, on Wednesday, the twentieth of April, and we will uh, get the will have the second part of the webinar of today. Also, I'm still, uh, I'll still be talking about volume profile and the, and how uh, its reading can be applied to the uh, to, to our trading. Okay, uh, so uh, I hope uh, many of you will be <laughs> will be at the webinar. Uh, hope this uh, topic today uh, was of your interest, and uh, let me thank you for your attention and have a good evening and good trading.